Hey everyone, welcome to West Coast Muscle Saws. Just out here in my studios looking over some of my vintage saws. You can see my uh, the old Super Pro 125. And I just got to thinking, you know, about the chainsaws and collecting. Not, not so much talking about how to repair them. Of course, I've repaired a lot of saws. But how do you get into collecting chainsaws? I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of guys out there to get turned into a big thing. And I've, I've collected them over the years. Collected them for probably 40-some years. You know, i got some great pictures of uh, some of my customers over the years. This lady here, she was uh, one of my good customers. Uh, this is a picture of her in the 50s running that big old McCullough during some competition. You've seen the other one on the internet, I'm sure. Uh, there have been several of them of, of her. There she is in another competition. Um, McCullough sponsored her. She's using the gear drive there. Beautiful picture. And of course, um, this here is a um, June 2018 Antique Trader, and it's on the Chainsaw Guy. That's me there. Uh, going there and there. Of course, there I am. Right there with my grandson, Noah, working on some uh, vintage chainsaws. Good article on telling how to collect chainsaws and how guys get into the chainsaw business. <coughs> Collecting them. Some good article there if you ever run into that. 2018. I, uh, first with chainsaw I ever got dealt with or knew anything about, my father was cutting firewood and he had this McCullough, there's the owner's manual for it right there, 140. <clears throat> that was uh, what we did in the wintertime, cut firewood and cured it and that's, we heated our house for years with it. And funny story about that saw, we didn't have a clue on a chainsaw what to do with it. And we were down cutting some wood in a yard there with some other guys around there. And they were doing something with their saw, and so we stopped to see what they were doing. And we asked them, you know, what are you doing to that? And they said, well, we're sharpening the chain. Well, we never knew you had to sharpen the chain, so <laughs> that's one reason my dad always, he looked like he was running like a handsaw trying to get the thing to cut. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a, a great book out there. If you get your hands on one of these, it's got some really great pictures of the different saws. It's really well put together. Uh, you can, if you ever round you up a book like this, it'll help you on collecting chainsaws and and uh, tell you what's out there in the year they were built. <clears throat> I'm gonna, we're going to try to get hold of Quentin uh, in just a minute here. Well, there's another great, some of my vintage stuff. It's uh, at the Oregon... Uh, Mark Industries uh, when Kennedy was running for president and of course those BPs you remember those I had those they were super rare Let's see if we get all the quit <clears throat> he collects these from Louisiana he collects a lot of chainsaws got some beautiful chainsaws Well, thank you, Joshua. Not available right now. We'll call him back here just in a few minutes. <clears throat> Another, some great stuff. This was, uh, from the 70s. You can buy all kinds of high performance stuff for your 101B engines. And that, they had the alcohol burners. You can modify the carbs and have your get your alcohol burners and uh, get the compression up on those and just have an unbelievable high performance. Buy custom heads for them. Even uh, Tecumseh, Wisconsin got into it. Even Wisconsin had their little engine for their go-karts. And here's a beauty. Kind of beautiful one. I talked to a lot of, a lot of the collectors over the years. Uh, I had some guys uh, back in the uh, Kansas. Super great guys. They, uh, they raised corn and they, in their slow time they collected chainsaws. I sold them a lot of saws and, uh, and they uh, were... Well, they, they, okay, 
Quentin just got hold of me. He's almost home. We'll call him here in a few minutes. <clears throat> they uh, collected uh, all kinds of saws. The um, the big home lights they were really into, and they're just there's all kinds of them you can get into depending on what you're into. Brian out there, you, you can follow him. Get out there. He's a really good restorer of chainsaws. Does a beautiful job. He restores the uh, vintage. What I call the muscle saw era, the vintage McCullough chainsaws in the 70s. He's really into those. Uh, there's just all kinds of ways you can collect chainsaws and um, and uh, have some fun doing it. Let me see here. Oh, <clears throat> Some of the stuff that I picked up over the years, which I just love, is of course the old Chainsaw Age magazines. And they're just great to see how things happened and when they were first breaking out and coming out. Just unbelievably neat stuff and the competition they had back there running the old canadian saws and different things these are great fun to collect and uh, here's a great one look at this that's how they actually cut timber looks like they're using a uh, uh that's a early 70 g or a 090 they're using there Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Testing out the Canadian saws on the West Coast. Great stuff. Let's just see if Quentin's made it back yet. <clears throat> he was on his way home. I just contacted him a little bit ago, and he's uh, he's going to uh, show some of his uh, collectible chainsaws. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I'm almost home. Right? <laughs> oh, no hurries, no worries. <laughs> yeah. I'm pulling my driveway in hand. Just all right, all right. We're just talking. We're live. We're talking a little bit about the chainsaw collecting. And I I wanted to show you, uh, show some of your stuff that you've got. You've got some really uh, wonderful stuff. I'd love to show it, man. Oh, love yeah. to show it. We're going to. We're going to. <laughs> Can I call you right back in just a minute? Yeah, yeah, take your time there. I'm going, to, I'm going to show a few more things here. You take your time, then we'll get a look at your collection. All right, thank you, Mr. All right, uh -huh. <clears throat> Some of the other magazines you really want to check out if you can is the uh, early West Coast Lumberman. These are, this one was 1939, and it's just got all kinds of great ads in there. On logging and different things they're just a lot of fun to look at and uh, I know uh, there's a, a Wayne Sutton is a big collector up in Amboy Washington you can uh, actually schedule with him and walk through his he's actually got a uh, chainsaw saw shop museum it just like you flash back in time into the 60s and 70s. I mean, he's got more chainsaws than you can imagine. And he set it up in a saw shop. He used to work in a uh, saw shop or owned a saw shop there in Amboy, Washington. And he built that there at his place. It's a beautiful little uh, saw shop. Not small, but it's just cram packed with every, every saw you can ever imagine and every accessory from that era and that zone. So if you're ever out in the uh, West Coast, Washington, uh, Oregon area, if you want to get a hold of him, uh, he, he's, uh, you can get a hold of him online, uh, Facebook probably, or get a hold of him. He's uh, still working for steel, and uh, he bounces around a lot, but uh, a really knowledgeable collector of all vintage chainsaws, so you want to make sure you uh, try to get a hold of him. There's another one. Great. I like the, uh, you know, I wasn't a real fan of the partners at the time, but they've turned into a highly collectible chainsaw, especially that 100. It was actually sold, uh, they sold that to McCullough, branded it as a one, I think it was 1,000 they call it, Power Mac 1,000. And uh, it, they're just really collectible anymore, and you can just find them. You need to go out and search around, look around in some of the logging communities, or also go to the um, barn sales. Sometimes you'll stumble right into them. And... Uh, you can uh, try to pick up a chainsaw, get you one for your collection. Here's another one of these 1946. As you know, guys, I'm stalling for time here, so bear with me. <laughs> anyway, there's a, there's a good one. Mall Tool Company. 
great ads in there. See what else we got here. All about the mills and the loggers and everything like that. And the, this bar here, now this was a, I had one of these. That's the long bar, and they drilled holes in it to lighten it up. Great idea, right? Well, you know what happened when you started cutting uh, into the logs and the sawdust plugged up into those holes? You could not get the bar out of the cut. And so that was a short-lived, and they're very rare and highly collectible, those bars. Worth a lot of money. That's another thing is the value on these saws. Uh, I collected them for years, and I sold a lot of them to guys that wanted to collect, and you would not to believe you would not believe the value they put on a lot of these chainsaws. Some of these saws, this one twenty-five cent here with a just that saw alone setting just like that, and this one runs beautiful. This is one of mine. You know, I've been offered twenty-five hundred dollars for it, but I couldn't replace it for that. You'd have to; they're hard to come by anymore. And then if you were to go and put a cart engine in that, which was available, and it was done a lot back in the 70s, I did a lot of it, uh, you could uh, probably fetch five, $6,000 easy out of one, if not more. Some of them are just worth an absolute fortune. They were just high performance chainsaws. And back then we didn't realize it. You could buy this saw brand new for 250, 300 bucks, buy a cart engine for another 300, Spend $150, put it in there, and you've got you a $700, $800 saw back in the 70s. Now it's worth thousands of dollars. Let's see if we can raise him again one more time. While we're waiting here, look at a couple more things here. He'll be right there, I'm sure. It's more of the, uh, I remember when uh, reading and seeing about this, it was called a tree monkey. Not to be confused with any of the uh, monkey climbers or the, the ground, the, the uh, guys that do the tree climbing in this day and age. Anyway, it was mechanical, mounted on the base of the tree. You see how it mounts there? And then it crawled up there and it cut the limbs off as it went up. And uh, high maintenance, uh, I'm sure it didn't last any time at all, but it was, uh, you know, something with the, everybody was trying something new with their chainsaw. And then the old, let's see here, the old Pioneer chainsaws, some vintage great ads there. And everybody always trying to get the Next best thing coming, there's a file guide there, you see that? Very popular. <clears throat> there's a picture of the tree monkey going up there. steel there. Well, we're going to have to try Quentin here in a little bit. We'll, uh, we'll give him a break and we'll go ahead and get out of this, but I'm going to fire it right back up here just shortly. So guys, hang in there. We'll get this going. <clears throat> 